Hi, Tyler Stallman. It's been nearly impossible for me to focus on anything lately, so I've really needed some software to keep track of what's going on so that I know what I need to do next, because honestly, my brain is not doing its job. Recently, I had Ali Abdal on, and we did a productivity makeover to get me a little more organized. And so the idea behind the Power Hour is that you have one hour every morning where the only thing you're allowed to do is the stuff that is important and not urgent. You're not allowed to use that time to do anything that has an upcoming deadline. And that's really helped move the needle from, from my own productivity. One of the key parts of that was Notion, and they reached out to sponsor a video. So now I'm gonna walk you through my whole Notion workflow. And thanks again, Notion, for supporting this show. The kind of work that we do is photo and video production. Right now, Notion for me is about managing YouTube projects. That's all that we've done. We don't use our main client work there, but it helps keep us in sync between myself, my wife, and our new editor. If you haven't seen Notion before, let me give you a quick introduction. Basically, as I click around, you're gonna see a bunch of different interfaces. Don't get too hung up on any one of them. Let's start by creating a blank page, and a page is like the main unit inside of Notion, and it can really be anything you want it to be. And I know that openness was part of my confusion at first. It's like, you make a document and it's any kind of document. But we're gonna start simple. I'm gonna hit three main tips along the way if you wanna take any notes. There's some important parts you're gonna to wanna to remember. The basic setup here is that this can be whatever you want. It could just be a page with an icon, which means you know you could just start typing text. You know how to type text and it'll just save it like a text document. That's fine, you might create a few of those, but you can also do things like create a database. This is when it gets more interesting. So for example, I could create a table and then I get to choose what all of the different table values are. So the name, this is called my, you know, video project. And you can create other stuff like, you know, have a date picker. And then as you add things in there, it saves it, right? Next project. Cool. And now we're filling out a table. Really simple. But let's see how that can be useful. Here's what I've done with it so far. This is my project table. So it's all the YouTube projects I have on the go right now. You got the name over here, scheduled date to be published, sponsor status and the invoice status. It's totally up to you what these columns are and how much you're gonna use them. And that's gonna to lead to my first tip, which is like the, the most important one. Only make it as complicated as it needs to be. I learned this over years of experience developing websites and tech products. If you start adding more in here than you actually need, you're gonna spend more time playing with it than getting the work done. So if you watched other people's tutorials about Notion, it might be a lot more complex than what you're seeing here. But for me, it works best to just have as little as possible on the amount that needs to be in here. So yeah, a table, that's great. It is a database, you know, all of these fields are being saved, but you can view them in other ways and that's what gets exciting. So for example, the board view, this is like a Kanban board. If you've ever used one of those, it's a big thing we used in product development. Basically, whenever I have a new idea for a video, it goes over here on the left of the screen in the no status area. This just means it's an idea. I don't know if this is going anywhere. I might delete some of these later, but gradually it starts moving towards the right. So actually Notion uh, video, which we're working on right now, should be here in production because we are currently working on it. Once I'm done recording, that's when I'll move it over to editing. If you've used Trello, you'll already be familiar with this metaphor. And the way that we used to do it back when I worked in an office is we'd write it down on index cards or sticky notes and put them up on the whiteboard and physically move them from the left to the right as they got completed. Actually, that's part of the reason I like using an iPad for this. Like Notion is a really great touchscreen app that has been my favorite experience of using it so far is on an iPad. So yeah, I've got this board view. Another nice one is the calendar view. So I can just at a glance, see when I have different projects coming up. And that's the most important structure of this is moving these cards from left to right. That's what I like the most but it does do more. So for example, let's come up with a new idea. Uh, I've got an idea for a crazy new video. And up at the top here, these are different properties that you can define. Uh, again, try to keep as few as you can, uh, but you know, maybe I'll enter the uh, sponsor of this video. And I could just start typing down here, you know, ideas for the video and just start entering it from scratch, treat it like a text document, but Notion is more interesting than that. So what I do instead is I use this template, which is actually something I took Ali Abdal's template and I modified it to something simpler for myself because he's smarter than me. And it just gives me some structure for a new video. So up at the top, I have my title ideas to remind me to come up with something clever, a few different versions, thumbnail ideas, some resource links, which come from Ali's template, and then notes about the video. And then below I have a checklist. So once I've actually uploaded the video, I can remember to do all the necessary steps 
after I published it because it is so easy to forget them. For somebody that's kind of ADD like me, checklists are a total lifesaver. And that comes to another one of my big tips is if it's not in the system, if you do not enter it in here, it doesn't exist. That means you don't check something off until it really is done. And if you finish it, you have to check it off. If you forget about the system, you can't really trust the system anymore. So you've gotta be pretty rigorous about staying involved in it. I find that when I'm working by myself on a project, having all of this extra stuff is a bit too much and I'll usually just use simpler notes. But now that I'm collaborating with somebody else, so for example, if I go back to projects, you can see that this is a shared board with Marco so he can see everything that's going on here. When and there's somebody else to collaborate with it's a lot easier to remember that you have to put the information there otherwise they just they don't know what's going on so that's the basic project management stuff but there are other useful things so for example i've started building out a little bit of documentation i just have one so far but i was explaining to marco our editor how to edit the podcast instead of just sending him a few emails i wrote out this kind of you know quick list of like here are all the steps you need to take the great thing about this is now we are building up some documentation for the future so if we hire another editor at some point or somebody else just needs to come on board we can just show them this and they understand the process so i want to start building out more of these different things that are part of our workflow so that we can show them to people that might want to collaborate with us we've got another simple board here that is just gear that we're going to be selling so we can keep track of it we've got a to-do kanban board here's one i've been working on lately that i really really like. So this is just inspiration. It's basically a long-term mood board. And I highly recommend this. This is another tip is to build up long-term catalogs that you know you're going to keep referring to for a while. So to start off, let's look at A-roll. Right now, this is A-roll. You see me talking. This is my talking headshot. And I've gone through and looked at a bunch of other ones. These are from the Masterclass series. I love their lighting. I love their cinematography. So anytime I'm lighting a person or myself, I can refer back to this document and say like, okay, what, what did I like about this? What are some elements that I want to replicate and do again and again? Or just ideas how to mix it up. I mean, like if you look at my shot and you look at this shot, Anna Wintour has this simple lamp in the backdrop, just adds a lot of texture and dynamics. I got the same lamp going on. Anyway, this only took an hour to go through and find all this stuff, but it becomes so valuable long-term. So I'm gonna go through, find more A-roll samples from YouTubers that I like. There's tons of inspiration out there, so keep track of it so you don't forget about it. And then we did the same thing for B-roll because you know when you're shooting tech videos, it can be hard to remember what's cool, like, or just what different angles are even possible. By the way, another Notion feature I really like is that you can change the cover of every page and make it extra easy because it is tied into Unsplash. So if I don't want to find or take a photo for myself, I could just search for, you know, camera images and, you know, change it to whatever else. And then you've got each page being a little more unique and identifiable. Another tip, I'm the kind of person that actually turns off almost all my notifications. Like even my watch only tells me about texts that are coming in. But if you're gonna start using a system like Notion, I recommend turn on notifications because if it's faster to send a text back and forth with your team, you might end up doing that more often. Whereas if it's here inside of Notion, it's gonna be a lot easier to keep track of long-term. So get notified and then you will use it more often. And that's it. That's how we're using Notion for our pre-production and our scheduling and all this other stuff. And it's been great to use. So thanks again, Notion, for sponsoring this video. There is a lot more to this, obviously, like the actual production and how we organize the videos and hand proxy files back and forth. If you want to learn more about all this stuff, I'd head to stallmanpodcast.com, where we talk way more in depth with other creators about how to do high end or not high end, just fun, creative production of all kinds. So hopefully I'll see you over there on the podcast, guys, or see you in the next video.